How did a 22-year-old slave from South Carolina meet President Lincoln and convince him to let black people fight for their freedom? Well, that's a hell of a tale. So listen up. Robert Smalls grew up a slave in Charleston, South Carolina, where his master rented him out to work on a cotton steamer called the Planter, where Smalls became a sailmaker and developed a love of the sea. I'm king of the world! I'm sorry, did I say king? I'm enslaved. I'm slave of the world! As the South succeeded from the Union, the planter was converted into a gunship. On April 12, 1861, the Confederate Navy opened fire on Fort Sumter, which was still held by the Union Army, and the Civil War began. By this time, Smalls was so skilled, he was trusted to be the wheelman, AKA the pilot of the plant. He knew Charleston Harbor better than anyone and loved piloting the plant, although he wasn't exactly keen on fighting to preserve the Southern way of life. Fire! Damnation, we missed! Whoops! Hit a manatee! Sorry! The planter's captain was C.J. Relier. Smalls! Who had no idea that Smalls was hatching a secret plan. About 3 a.m. on May 13, 1862, the planter was left unattended, and Smalls made his move. Disguising himself in the captain's clothes, he steamed away from the Charleston port. About an hour and a half later, he reached the first Confederate Navy checkpoint in Fort Sumter. He'd studied the captain's body language and knew the signals the sentry would be looking for. What y'all doing out here at this ungodly hour? Uh... Well, it's a matter, Skipper. Cat got your tongue? Hmm? Here we go. <clears throat> Great orange spoon, I say. I merely had a momentary mucus nugget lodged in my esophageal area. I'm sorry to hear it, sir. My throat's been bothering me as well. Can I offer you a lodging, sir? Oh, no, don't trouble yourself. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I'll hop in the dinghy and roll it out to you. Post haste. No, no, please, I insist. Care flavor? Not a fan. I got honey lemon, too. Yeah. You meant the lettuce? Enough. But, sir. I hate lozenges, OK? Good day, sir. GSS planner. Clear for passage. After he got past that checkpoint, he got to step two of his plan. A prearranged rendezvous with a bunch of other slaves and their family, including his wife and his son. Thank you, Captain Relier. Captain Relier, son, it's me, your daddy. Oh, thank you, daddy. With the slaves on board, Smalls got past three more checkpoints. And then as dawn broke, Smalls sailed north for the Union Naval Blockade just north of Charleston Harbor. But when the Union captain spotted the Confederate gunship coming at him, he got a little jumpy. Fire! I told you to fly that sheet up the flagpole. I'm sorry, man. I'm really digging on this thread count right now. Run it up the mass, you idiot! Come on, man. I've been sleeping on burlap all my life. Now, John! I'm naked up under here. I don't give a damn. The Union ship saw the surrender sign and held their fire. Minutes later, the men, women, and children on the planet were free at last. Congratulations. You're all free. Oh. Yes! Thank you, sir. And in addition to our own freedom, I hope that the planner may be of some use to Uncle Abe to help the fight for those we left behind. He will. I love you, Captain Relier. <laughs> oh, right. I love you, Captain. What's wrong with that kid? He thought his dad was someone else just because he was wearing a hat? Hey, listen, a minimal disguise can be surprisingly effective. Look, watch this. See this right here? Clock Kent, right? Superman. See how that works? But they're comic book characters. 
Yeah, but what we just saw was a sketch comedy reenactment. I think they added the thing with the hat as a joke. Oh, I see. But the basic story was true. No, 100%. Anyway, listen to me. Robert's small story just gets better from there. When he turned that ship over to the Union, the government gave him a reward of $1,500, which would be about $35,000 today. Ooh. That's one of those new super fast cameras. We only had to hold still for another 12 minutes. Smalls became an instant celebrity and soon got an invitation to meet Abraham Lincoln at the White House, where he made the case that black people should be allowed to fight in the United States Armed Forces. I don't know why Negroes would be motivated to risk their lives to fight slavery. Well, um, with all due respect, sir. <laughs> Man, I totally had you. Robert Smalls became a highly decorated captain in the U.S. Navy, where he piloted the USS Planter to many victorious battles, including the defense of Fort Sumter after the Union retook it. Ah! Oh, yeah! After the war, Smalls became a successful businessman in Philadelphia before moving back to South Carolina, where in 1874 he got elected to the United States Congress and served five terms. And here's the best part. In 1865, he bought his former master's mansion and raised his family there. He even let his master's widow live in a spare room. And that's why everyone should know about Robert Smalls.